my name is Tine from Victoria Designs and if you're like me and you like blue and purple color flowers you're going to love this new kit, the Bluebells and Co kit. Anytime I'm picking out flowers for my home or garden or as a gift, I automatically navigate towards the bluish colored flowers. I don't know why. So I'm really in love with this kit and I actually made a tutorial with it to make a double journal. This double journal is a little bit based upon the folder that I made with the Dark Academia Writer Kit, but with many differences. If you don't like bluebells, how even? You can of course use our other kits to make this craft project. And if you do like bluebells, you can of course make a ton of other craft projects with this kit as well. In this video, I'm first going to show you the finished project and a few of the printed sheets. And after that, I explain from A to Z every step how to make this double journal. If you want to make this project or other beautiful craft projects with the principles of this Bluebells & Co kit, you can find more information in my Etsy shop, the link is below. And now let's start crafting because that's what we crafters do. Let me first show you the ready project. So this is a double journal. It looks the same model-wise on both sides, just the panels that I chose are different ones. So let me show you here. This one opens with ribbons, of course you can choose to use a completely different um, closure. It opens like this. Oh yeah, and the ribbon is fixed with brads here. And then you have a single signature journal here with beautiful journal pages. Some have more room, more space to write, like these. Some have less space to write. One completely full page here and there really decorates your journal already oh, so beautiful look at this see there's not much on this page but look at the detail look at the details here so this and then in the back on the other side it's just the same we have a little pocket here and i put some of these stamps from the embellishments pages in here and then we have a little envelope right here this and I put some library cards in there yeah I cut them off because they were a bit too long to be put in in this uh, in this small envelope here but let me take it out it looks like this and that's it on one side and let me show you the other side as well and the reason I added these brads to the ribbon is that you can close it so much better than if you don't add these brads here. So on the other side it looks like this, exactly the same model but different panels like this. And again other journal pages, some are completely empty. beautiful can't wait to start writing in this there pocket just like this one see how beautiful that is so and for the binding i chose to use my staple method again but you can definitely sew your signatures in instead of using the staple method first i'm going to show you a few of the principles from this kit i printed everything on 160 grams paper that's about 60 pound cover and the journal pages, I printed most of these and I printed them double-sided. And my little trick to align the front and the back as much as possible is to print the fronts at 100% and the backs at 101 or 102%. So the backs are going to be a little bit larger and if I then cut out the fronts, you're not going to have those white edges. Now, some printers seem to just not be able to print in the center of the page where they're supposed to print. If you have one of those printers and the center of the journal pages is here on one side and on the other side completely there, if you have such a printer I suggest to print the regular journal pages on the front and on the back just print one of the very neutral papers from this kit. Okay, I'm quickly going to go through these. Thank you. 
As you see, some of the papers are more filled, some are half filled, some are almost empty, some are completely empty. So you can really build this journal as you like best. I just showed you front and back 20 journal spreads. There are four more in the kit. So, and here are a few of the papers. Now there are 24 papers in there, vertical ones, horizontal ones, and a few very neutral ones that would fit with everything. Here's a beautiful page, vertical one. Vertical one, vertical one, and I think two horizontal ones here. Yeah, but as I said, there are a lot more in the kit. I also have a few of the embellishment sheets here. Just quickly going to show you these. And there are 15 in total. So this is what it looks like. Now let me show you how to make this. First, I'm going to give you the measurements of the base pieces for me. Now, the base pieces measurements depend on how big your journal pages are going to be. Now, my journal pages, when I come out of the printer and I cut them out, are 10 and a quarter by 8 inch. That's because I print on A4 paper, it's smaller, etc. Et With your printer, they can be larger, they can be smaller, it really depends. So, so print the journal pages out first, cut them out, and according to that size, you will know what all the rest of the measurements are going to be. It might sound a little bit difficult, but believe me, it really isn't. And I also made some PDF sheets with measurements in inches and centimeters with my measurements, and also guidelines how to adjust these measurements to your journal page sizes when they come out of the printer. If you want this PDF, just opt in via the link in the description and you will get these measurements. So my journal pages, as I've said, are 10 and a quarter by 8 inch. So your first base piece, make it a quarter of an inch higher, that's 6 millimeter. Then your journal pages and 5 eighths of an inch wider, that's 1.6 centimeter wider. So that's your first base piece. Base piece. <laughs> base piece. <laughs> And as you can see, I've written down on them the measurements that I'm using right now, in my case. For the second base piece, there are actually two pieces. Now, it seems that there was a big pile going on here with base pieces, but it's actually easier than it looks. So these second pieces are the flaps. So there's two of them and they are the same height as your first cover piece. And they are two and three quarters of an inch wide, which is seven centimeters. And in my case, these two are these sizes. Pause the video if you need to write them down or you can download the PDF with the measurements. So two of these. And the third piece is again the same height as your other cover base pieces. So that's easy. But then it should be seven eighths of an inch wider then your journal page closed. So I'm going to close, fold in half my journal page. So fold it in half. And for the width, you add seven eighths of an inch or in centimeters, 2.2 centimeters. Okay, this was the most confusing, I know, but it's actually easy. Just get one of your journal pages, fold in half and seven eighths of an inch or 2.2 centimeters wider. That's it. So these are the three cover pieces. We're going to start with those. The other pieces are actually for two small envelopes and two pockets. So I'm gonna leave these until later. So, and first I'm going to score these four parts. Again, if you don't have a scoring tool or a scoreboard like this, just use an empty pen and a ruler and measure where your score lines need to be. This one needs to be scored at five, three eighths and five and a half. I totally forgot to mention, but I probably already edited it in. This is very heavy cardstock, it's 300 grams. It's about 111 pound cover cardstock. So you can actually push a little bit on this. So these are the scoring lines for this one. And these, these need to be scored at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. I hope I didn't write too much. Ooh. Okay, I made a very stupid mistake because when I score here, you're definitely going to see the number. So I'm gonna make a new one for this. So yeah, you see, I thought I was careful, but I wasn't careful at all. I'm just going to swap this one for that one. 
So score at half an inch and three quarter of an inch. Three of these. And then the last one, I'm gonna score at half an inch and five eighth of an inch. So half an inch here and just eighth of an inch further. That's it. And after the scoring, I'm going to fold these scoring lines. Now, these two are easily done. So I really like to use a bone folder here because it's very heavy paper. Because this is heavy paper, I like to put the tips of my nails in it and then just fold the paper with my thumbs like this. I know I don't really have nails. I had to cut them when I played the piano, otherwise you can't play the piano. And now I just can't bear it if my nails are long. So no fancy nails here. Okay, these are done. Now, these score lines are very close together, like an eighth of an inch. With this type of heavy paper, it's a bit harder. So what I like to do is, I'm gonna score one line. Okay, I can do this same way, my nails in there. But then the second one is a bit harder. So for the second score line, I'm gonna take a ruler and I put the edge into the scoring line and I'm just going to fold it up. I'm just going to fold it up like this and try not to move the ruler. <laughs> yes. It's a bit fiddly, but it's worth it. It's worth it that we have a eight of an inch gusset here. So that one's done. Now the other one, the first one we can do fairly easy. And for the second one, I'm going to put the ruler here. I put my ruler over the score line that I already did. Otherwise it's going to be even harder like this. And then push it down and fold it up. Oh, this one's going better because it has better uh, non-slip thingy on the back. Yeah. Just something that doesn't slip away. There. And then we have our second fold right here and I'm happy with that. Great! The first pieces that I'm going to assemble are these two. Did I show you these measurements, by the way? So here they are. Um, the first pieces that I'm going to assemble are these two. And actually, this one is going to go up and this one is going to go the other way. So this one will fold backwards. And for that, I'm going to put some double-sided tape here and just glue it on. You can definitely use glue. If you use double-sided tape, take tape that really sticks well. If you want to be very sure, just use glue but then you would have to hold it until it's really, really dry for like at least a minute. Depends on the glue. So then I'm going to put this down and glue it on like this. It doesn't matter which side, because if your measurements are correct, these pieces should be the same. So I put my tape right next to the fold, not on the fold. I'm gonna glue this also right next to that fold. Make sure the top and the bottom are aligned like this. So doesn't matter that my writing's upside down at all. You're not going to see that later. That was just for you guys. Now, the next thing to add are these flaps. These are going to be the flaps. So this one is going to be attached right here. And the other one is going to, to be attached right here. So let me show you exactly where they go. So the first one, I'm going to put the tape on top here, right next to the fold again. Or the glue, of course. If you use glue for this uh, project, I would advise to have some clips handy to keep everything in place until the glue dries. The glue dries. So, this one I am going to 
put on top right here and I'm gonna make sure this fold where the tape is uh, right next to not this one but this one is going to come next to that fold so I'm gonna make sure that you guys see it very well I'm gonna glue this here like this like as you see so it will look like this now actually these tabs are both half an inch they just line up here and um, but i would always check the outside so now these parts are next to each other and this one will close like this later on and then we're going to flip it like this put tape or glue on this as well and again Put that first fold next to this first fold. So again, this fold, make sure the top and bottom are lined up, right next to that fold, like this. And now we have two of the same openings here and here. Something extra that's optional, I'm going to cut the corners of all these uh, corners. And I have here this corner rounder here. I'm gonna use the biggest one. So, and I'm gonna do that with all eight corners that are reachable. And another optional thing is I'm going to ink the edges on both sides to give it more of a vintage feel. Now this color is a vintage photo but the distressed oxide, not, the, um, not the, the regular ink. But you can use the regular ink from any brand, any color that you like. I'm just gonna go everywhere that I can reach. <laughs> Outside, inside, every space that you can see. Now that our base is ready, I'm ready to add the closure first. Now I'm going to opt for a ribbon closure. Of course you can use another closure, magnet closure, button closure, circle closure. Make sure to add the closure at the right time. It depends of course on the type of closure, when it's time to add it under the panels, above the panels, etc. So I have here two ribbons and I used seam binding and I crunched it when it was wet and then I dried it. And now I have two um, seam binding ribbons that are 24 inches each, not pulled out, but loose. And I'm going to attach each ribbon the same way. And the ribbons will be attached on the flap part under the panel. I'm going to find the center first. And for me, the center is right here. I'm gonna immediately do that on the other flap as well. Then I don't have to measure again and think again, etc. There. And to attach it, I'm going to just use a strip of double-sided tape. You can use, again, glue as well. Make, just make sure that you don't put any tape or glue one eighth of an inch from each side because that will be exposed. The panel will be a little bit smaller. So adding a piece right here. There. I'm gonna remove that backing and then I'm going to measure 11 inches here it's about 28 centimeters loose not pulled and that's where I'm going to start gluing this ribbon down and of course under the panel I'm gonna pull it a little bit so you don't see it bulking up if you're using regular ribbon, there's no need for pulling or not pulling, etc. It's just a regular ribbon. So for now, that's it. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Again, 
going to measure about 11 inches about then make sure this sticks later when a few of the panels are already on i'm going to add brads to keep them into place but i will tell you why later now for the panels you can use any design paper that you like any of the printables from our shop etc and i'm gonna tell you how big they need to be with your measurements and i'm gonna share my measurements first before you do that just take some of your beautiful papers and find the pieces that you want to use for example you want this piece here then you want this piece here etc etc just find in your beautiful sheets which pieces you want to use for your project just lay it on top draw markings on the back and cut them out etc and i'm gonna do that right now i cut all the panels for my base and for the base actually you only need two sizes big ones one two three and on the other side the same one two three and for the small size we need four for these flaps the outside and the inside you see so and actually for most panels it's the same thing make it just a quarter of an inch or six millimeter less high and less wide than the panel you're going to stick it on that's not the rule that's just the formula that i use and i think a lot of other crafters use that formula exactly the same so hey i already cut them out i chose where i wanted them so for example i want this one here and i already rounded the corners as well in the right spot and i added ink on all the edges so these are completely prepared to go in there so i'm going to start with all the panels except the two ones that are going to go on the inside of the front so this is the front this is then the flap and then the inside on the side with the curved um, corners if you like these ones I'm not going to attach yet because I first want to attach brads to the ribbons. But before we can do that, we have to attach all the other panels. So these two I prepared for the insides on both sides. I'm going to put them aside for a while. And all the other ones I'm just going to glue in with my glue stick. Use a good sticking glue stick or just a great glue. I used to put double-sided tape on all the edges and then glue in the center, etc. You can do that as well, it's what you prefer. So these are the sizes I have for the six big ones. And these are the sizes I have for the four flap ones. I'm going to start putting these in. This is going to be a front. So just gonna add some glue. Here. So for the front, that's this one. And I'm going to make sure I have an eighth of an inch border all around like this. There. Keep in mind for the front design that there's going to be a flap on top. And check out if it works with the design that you have chosen to put on top sometimes it can be easier to have a regular picture here and a pattern on underneath that's all up to you so this one goes here i'm going to add the flap on top if you want to be sure you can add extra glue on top of this ribbon or extra um, double-sided tape just to secure it a bit more this and on the back side here I'm going to glue this one in make sure your edges are down good enough so add enough um, glue on your edges that's very important so they don't come come loose there Okay, and on, oh yeah, on the inside, I'm gonna also put this one.
So all these eight panels have been attached already like this. Now, if we would, well, you can do it. If you would close it like this, that's very possible, but usually the ribbon is actually pretty loose like that. that with the seam binding, it goes a bit better, but it's better to attach first the ribbon up till here and it will close a lot better when it's attached until here. So I'm going to attach it with brads first here with a few brads, I think three, and on the other side as well. And when we've secured those, then it's time to put in the other panels. So what do I need? So I have here six tiny little brads. You can use bigger ones if your ribbon is bigger or, well, I could use bigger ones, but I think these tiny little ones are good enough. And I'm going to make some markings in the center, one, two and three inch from that fold, the fold here. I'm going to first see where the ribbon is. So one, two, well, actually I'm gonna use a pen because you won't see it. So you guys will see it better. One, two, three, but I'm gonna check if it's still in the center because that's very important. Yeah, this one should be a bit more here. Yeah, there need to be a bit higher, yeah. And then this one here. Yeah, it's very important to put them straight in a line that you don't have a wonky line of um, brads going on here. I'm going to punch these holes. this so and now it's a little bit tricky i'm going to pull this ribbon here so make sure it's closed and not open because if you attach it like this you're never going to be able to close it back in the right way so i can see through my ribbon that's actually a, a big benefit otherwise really keep checking where you are there and I'm going to put my um, brad through the ribbon. It's, it's, it's a benefit if your ribbon is indeed loosely woven. This through the hole. And I'm gonna open the prongs. Here. Yeah, I need this because these are for some reason super, super, super sturdy. Oh, here's the last one. There. I'm going to really open it that you don't see the prongs later on. So that's one. And I'm going to attach the second one. Make sure you're indeed in the center of the ribbon. Because otherwise things are going to look, well, yeah, wonky. Yeah, this is a hard one because there's a lot of... Um, detail going on here open the prongs and then the third one this is okay to be loose because it needs to be able to move the ribbon should be quite straight between these three so make sure it's even and flat and of course if you have a totally different closure <laughs> skip this part there I'm happy, I'm happy enough there. And open like this. So, and now if I tie my bow here, it will be so much more closed and better closed this journal than if the ribbon would start here. So, now that these are in place, I am going to add tiny bits of double-sided tape on top. Just protect the paper that's going to come on top. This, I'm gonna make sure it sticks well enough. Don't worry, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to remove the backings. And now 
I could put glue on this and put it in here on top. There you go. I'm gonna turn it around so I can give it a good squeeze here. There. And now that's finished, you don't see the prongs of the brats anymore. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the ribbon on this side. So the cover is ready, ready to be used. This is supposed to be like this. But before we're going to add the journal pages, I'm actually going to add first an envelope here and a pocket there. You can do it afterwards, but I find now I have more room to wiggle around, etc. Um, it's a bit harder when all the journal pages are in. And I'm going to do the same thing on both sides, on this side and the other side as well. So I have here two identical bases. Make these eight inches high and make them a quarter of an inch less wide than your panels here. So you will have an extra eighth of an inch uh, left on both sides. In my case, the measurements are like this. I'm going to put this one aside for a bit so I can concentrate. There. And now I'm going to score it. Well, I'm going to score it like this because otherwise you, we will see this writing again. I'm going to score it at three inch here. And I'm also going to score it at six and three quarters, like this. I'm also again going to punch these corners, optional. And I'm going to fold my envelope. It's a very simple one. And I'm also going to add some inking on the visible sides. No need to put any ink on the back because we're gonna glue it in anyway, you won't see that. So and now for the panels and the closure on this little envelope. Again, the same formula, you make your panels one quarter of an inch or six millimeter less wide and high than your base. So for me, these three pieces are actually the same. One is going to come underneath here, one on the inside of the flap and one on the outside of the flap. I already chose them. I rounded the corners if necessary. I inked the edges and these are for me all three this size and for the front of the envelope for me it is this size i'm gonna start with a little strip here placing it right here so you have something beautiful to look at of course you can just leave it as this if you like this as well i'm just going to glue that in and i only inked the top part here because the bottom part you're not gonna see there, nicely in the center, eight of an inch all around, three millimeter, there. And I'm also already going to apply this piece and the outside flap, or what I chose for the outside of the flap. And then we're gonna add our closure. There, as you see, I'm not closing the envelope yet. There. And now for the closure, I chose a circle closure. So you've seen me making this a lot of times and I'm quickly going to explain for those who are tuning in just right now on our channel. I have punched circles with a circle punch. Mine is 5 8 of an inch. That's about 1.6 centimeter diameter. Doesn't matter. I'm going to glue them on top of each other two by two to make them really sturdy. Now normally I put three layers on top of each other, but because we have such sturdy cardstock to start with, it's the same one as this, it's just a piece, a leftover piece, a two is more than enough. So I'm just going to glue them on top of each other two by two. There. 
I'm gonna punch a hole in the center. Gonna add some ink to the edges because I really want this one to stand out. Actually, I'm gonna add more ink here to make them a little bit darker. Yeah, you can give these the color that you want, of course. And I have these big gold brads that I'm gonna use. Let's see if my hole's big enough. Yep, yeah, it is. Again, you can use small ones, big ones, shaped ones. Okay, now I'm going to check where I want these. I want this one in the center of this flap. The center is about here and vertically as well. There and here as well. This hole is for me 5 8 of an inch from that edge. I'm gonna put the hole of this other circle also 5 8 of an inch from that edge. Of course you can put it lower if you like, but yeah, I like the symmetry. Okay, this is perfect. Gonna punch the holes again. And I have my little trick here, piece of chipboard with a slot in it. I'm gonna make sure these legs are completely true and then through the hole opening the legs here and when I get this out I have a nice gap for the twine same here in the chipboard through the hole open the legs nice gap. I'm gonna leave this in for a bit so I can quickly add a bit of double-sided tape on top. I'm not gonna put double-sided tape here but something else. So now I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take the tape off and now I'm gonna take the inside panel here And now I can glue this right in the center on top there. Also going to add a bit of ink on the inside. Forgot that of the envelope piece. Oops, that's not closing. There. Just on the top because the rest you're not going to see. So. And now that everything is in place, I'm going to close the envelope. And I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. This is smaller, this is quarter of an inch, six millimeter wide. I'm just going to put two strips on either side of the front here. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one, make sure. These are nicely opened. And here I'm just going to put a piece of, oh, that's a large piece, <laughs> piece of regular tape here. You can use washi tape, just so nothing will um, catch behind these legs, but you're not going to see it. So then I'm going to remove these bags and close the envelope. And I'm gonna use part of this um, thread. It's a bit too large for me. Just going to unravel it so I have part of this thread to use for the closure. So I have this one and I'm going to wrap it around the top here, the top circle. There, make a few knots. Snip off the excess, gonna tuck in the ends as much as possible. They don't want to be tucked in here. Yeah. And then one, two, three, and snip off the excess. There. 
Now I have a beautiful envelope. I'm just going to put some double-sided tape all around the edges. And some glue in the center so it's really glued in well in this uh, in our project we don't want this to come loose oops <laughs> don't do that I'm trying to be too fast here just take your time there I'm actually going to put a piece on top because I don't like that it's going so far from the edge there. This. And then some glue in the center. And then I'm going to take my project and I'm going to fix this envelope on the bottom and I'm gonna make sure there's an eighth of an inch three millimeter all around here here and here so nicely in the center like this I'm gonna repeat that on the other side later because I'm first going to show you how to make here an extra pocket on top and for that again the same width as the envelope here and this one is one and three quarters of an inch high. I also have a panel for that and I'm gonna glue that on. The panel I already inked. So I can glue that on top. Oh yeah, did you see my measurements? Here they are. There. <laughs> well done, Zinna. Well done. Okay, let's see if I can iron these wrinkles out as I can there nicely in the center again this is a quarter of an inch less high and less wide I'm gonna ink edges here as well this is a really simple pocket and I'm actually going to find the center here because I'm gonna add a notch here so center here is here and I'm gonna cut out a notch here you can use any notchy punchy thingy that you have laying around this is just a inch circle punch wow that was heavy duty hey I'm gonna add some ink here as well so this is fixed and then again I'm going to put my let me put this away for a bit I'm gonna put my narrow tape on the sides and on the bottom and this is going to form a really simple pocket there remove the backing of course you can always use wet glue and form a very small bead of glue on the edges as well and then hold it long enough so it dries and now you can position this pocket wherever you want i'm just going to use leave an inch in between i think between these there and then again eight of an inch on both sides et voila oh, it's not completely straight sorry about that yeah that's the thing with um, double-sided tape. It's in there. If I would have put a bit of glue stick on top, I would have been able to maneuver it a bit, but it's in there. So I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. Too. So make and add an envelope and a pocket. And then we're gonna finally add the journal pages. Okay, so I attached the pocket and the envelope on both sides. Now it's finally time to put in those journal pages. Okay, so I'm going to do that with my staple method. I actually found some blue staples and I separate them like this. 
And of course, I could buy a long reach stapler. But since I try to make my tutorials so you don't have to buy too many extra tools, I'm just going to show you how to do that without needing to buy a tool. If you love buying tools, <laughs> go for it. Okay, so I used this uh, edge thingy here to separate the um, staples. Yeah, you really need something sharp. But these are just regular staples for a stapler. I'm going to punch the holes in this eighth of an inch spine here and on the other side as well because that's where the journal pages are going to come into and i'm going to i'm already going to put my map underneath you can make markings first but i'm just going to directly punch my holes and i choose to put my hole my first hole for the first staple at one inch and three quarter of an inch from the side you can use more or less there i just want to be sure that i'm in the middle then i'm going to use a staple as my guide my template for the next hole the same on the other side yeah just trying to make sure that i'm in the center one inch and three quarters of an inch there and then the staple as my guy i think my staples are a half an inch but i just want to be sure here so it's best to use your staple as your guide good i'm gonna do the exact same on the other side this aside for a bit I'm gonna first take my journal pages I already fold one in half you know for the beginning to see how big they were going to be for the rest of my measurements as I've said in the beginning I printed on 160 grams paper which is very heavy if you want more pages use lighter um, paper and I'm just going to use so one two three for five of these pages and then I have normally five left for the other signature so there's only room for one signature in there how big you make it that's up to you I'm just going to see which one I'm going to put on top so I'm going to use this on top here so this will be my beautiful front of the first signature let me just fold these in half gonna use my bone folder so yeah you can definitely double these amount of pages if you use lighter paper so make sure all your signatures are facing the right way because I have some clear pages as well for a lot of writing actually I'm going to use this page as a cover for the other signature on the other side so I'm gonna switch with one page this so all pages are correct i'm going to use this as a template i'm going to eyeball that this is in the center so there should be about an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom i'm just quickly going to make a small mark where my holes should come gonna punch the holes outside in and now I'm gonna take a staple actually I should have punched my holes here outside in as well now hopefully you won't see it too much yeah that was a bit of a mistake it's best to punch them outside in then the holes are a bit more beautiful that's that's just it I'm gonna go outside in through these holes. I can still see them even though I close them again. And then through these holes. Could be a bit fiddly. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so 
they're both true and I'm going to close these prongs here. Like this. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other one here, the other side. So first outside in through the spine of the cover. There. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb and then <laughs> if that's possible. And then I'm going to go through the holes that I just made. There. I say it's a bit fiddly. I, 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 I agree. But when you're true, you're true. You're, the binding is done, you know. Okay, and then carefully fold them with your bone folder to one side. So they will move well enough. And to the other side as well. Oh, this is going to go smoother. So, and now it's in there. And this side can already be closed with a beautiful bow there and i'm gonna do the exact same thing with the journal pages on the other side so here we are we have a very beautiful double journal and it looks the same on both sides apart from the panels of course and it works the same on both sides so just Open it like this. They have a beautiful journal, one signature journal here, and you have a beautiful pocket uh, envelope here, I mean, to put some things in, and a little pocket in here as well. That's it. Mm -hmm.